want to share a message with you this morning called The Best is Yet to Come. How many of you believe the best is yet to come? You really believe that? Well, I'm going to give you three reasons why I really believe that and straight from the word of God, why I believe the best is yet to come. But I, I'll begin with this story of a woman that I heard that she was terminally ill. She called her pastor in uh, to prepare the funeral service. And uh, she was telling her pastor what she wanted at her funeral, the song she wanted sung, the scripture she wanted read. Uh, she even said, this is the dress I want to wear when you lay me in the casket. Uh, but one more thing, pastor. She said, I also want you to put a fork in my hand. I said, a fork in your hand? What, what is a fork in your hand? What's the fork for? Well, in my house, after dinner, I would always tell my family, hold on to your fork because the best is yet to come. That meant dessert was on the way. So don't put up your fork. We'll clear the plates, but hold on to your fork. She said, I want you to put a fork in my hand so that when people walk by and say, Pastor, what does the fork mean? You can say, I wanted them to know, hold on to your fork. The best is yet to come. I believe the best is yet to come for each and every one of us. I believe the best is yet to come for Freedom Church. I believe the best is yet to come for Freedom Youth. I believe the best is yet to come for each and every one of us in this house. Do you believe that today? All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says this. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit, for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. I believe some of us have seen some of the, the things that God has prepared for us, but I don't believe we've seen everything that God has prepared. Some maybe haven't even tapped into the first thing that God has prepared for you. I just know we've grown up hearing that a good things come to those that wait, and that's really regardless of your heart's condition, but this scripture tells us that if you are in Christ and you love him, uh, then you, you haven't even begun to imagine the things that God has prepared for you. So three reasons why I believe, three scriptures that will prove to us why I believe the best is yet to come. And the first is simply this, God always has our best in his mind. In fact, there was an old song that uh, used to be sung, said, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He was thinking about you. In fact, our best is on his mind right now. And here's why I believe that. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, perfect will. Well, what does that mean? Some have said, well, it means it's kind of a stair step. You can be in his good will, but not all the way into his pleasing. You've been in his pleasing, but not all the, all the way in his perfect will. It's kind of like a target and uh, the center is the perfect. And I, I don't know if that's true or not, but here's what I do believe. I believe that good means it, his, his plan for you can't be improved upon. Pleasing because it's going to settle with your spirit. You're going to be satisfied with it. Perfect because God Almighty has planned something supernatural and specific for you to work out in your life because he has our best on his mind. He's thinking about you, his good, pleasing, perfect will. Now, we may not always understand what that will is. We may not always agree in the beginning what that plan is. But I believe that as we continue to live, hindsight will tell us that God's plan for our life is always better than anything we could ever imagine. That's why Romans 8, 28 says, we know, everybody say, we know. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. Do you love him? Come on. Do you love God? Then he, this says we know God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. The best that the world has to offer will always fall short of God's best. Now, the best that the world has to offer may look glittery. It may be the shiny new object and it may be attractive for a while, but it will always fall short of God's very best. God's working in our lives. Even when we don't see it, we sing it. Even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. And it's his working is not based upon our goodness. It's not based upon our effort. It's not based upon what we do. It's based upon how much he loves us. It's based upon his character. And he's always opening doors for us. He's always working in our lives. In fact, 2 Timothy 2.13 says this. If we're faithless, he remains faithful 
for he cannot disown himself. So even when we mess up, God's still working on his plan for our lives. Even when we fall short, God's still working out his best for our lives. You have to believe it. The second reason I, I believe that God is, uh, the best is yet to come is because God will finish what he started in us. Philippians 1, 3, or 1, 6 says, he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Has God started a work in your life? Has God started a work in your life? The very fact that you're here today is an indication that God has started something in your life. I mean, most people, if God's not starting something, if God's not working something in your life, don't usually just show up at church. It's like, I don't know what else to do on Sunday morning. I think I'll just go to church. No, God has to be working in your life for you to be here today. God has to have started something in your life. And this says that if he started it, he will complete it. So look at where you are now and know that it's not where we want to be, but it's not where we used to be. God's been working in our lives and he's got this process working and he's working things out for good in our lives. How many of you have ever seen the bumper sticker back when bumper stickers were more common uh, that said, be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. I remember seeing that. Now, I always, those are always the annoying people on the road. And I always wanted to have my own bumper sticker that said, you know, I'm tired of waiting. God's taking too long. Uh, but I, I didn't do that. But I'm glad that God's not tired of waiting on us. He's still working on us. He's patient with us. The reality is that we're all in a process. Every single one of us are in a process here. I mean, Freedom Church is about helping people find freedom. Some people want more help than others. Some people need more help than others. You can go ahead and poke somebody next to you. The fact is, some of us need more help than others. And, and some are more willing to accept that help than others. Some of you, you may be here today or you may be watching online right now. And you may be just checking out what Christianity is all about. You may be just trying to figure out, I don't know, what are these people who call themselves Christian? What is this all about? People that go to church every Sunday morning and I mean, they sing songs, and they lift their hands and they cry and they laugh and they shout and you know, they, they yell the name Jesus. What is all this about? Maybe you're just checking everything out. You're in a process. But then there are others that you've been in this process a while. You accepted Christ a long time ago, but we're still in a process. You know what that process is called? In church lingo, it's called sanctification. That just means we're becoming more like Christ. We're being sanctified. We're being changed. Every day we become more and more like him. Every day we hope to become more and more like him. Some days we do better than others. Right, Marcus? Some days we do better than others. The fact is we are all in this process of becoming more like Christ or trying to find out more about Christ. We're all trying to figure it out. Well, the fact that that there, has, there is something that has started in us that has put us in this process. Whether we're at the beginning of the process or you're on your way to a fully devoted follower of Christ. You know, all that says that God will finish what he started. He has started something in you. So that proves to me that the best is yet to come. There's still something better out there for us. Now, here's the third reason why I believe the best is yet to come is because God wants to do good to us. He simply wants to. And here's how I know that. In Jeremiah 32, verse number 38, it says, they shall be my people and I will be their God. Then I will give them one heart, one way, that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them. Now look at this next verse. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Everlasting covenant that I will not turn away from doing them good but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. Yes, I will rejoice over them. I will celebrate over them to do them good. And I will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart, and with all my soul. This is God's covenant with Israel. And you may sit there and say, well, yeah, that was God's covenant with Israel. That's not with us. But if you go and read Galatians chapter three, Galatians three tells us 
that we are all children of Abraham by faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, the promises and the covenants that God made to Israel is a covenant and promise that God makes to us who are in faith with Christ. So if you have made a decision to follow Christ, then you can read this and say, God's not turning away from me because he wants to do me good. God's rejoicing. He's celebrating with me today because he wants to do good in my life. God wants to do good for us. He has something better in plan for each and every one of us. You just have to believe it. We sing the song, you're a good, good father. That's who you are. We believe that. Now, if you don't believe this, and I'm wrong, you've lost nothing. But if you don't believe this and I'm right, you've lost everything. So I'm talking about a good God. I'm talking about the good that he wants to do. So it implies that God is good. And probably one of the most challenging questions that is asked of Christians concerns this concept that God is good. And people will always ask, if God is good, then why is there evil in the world? If God is good, why isn't he doing something to stop the evil that's in the world? If God is good, why do bad things happen to good people? And many people assume that the existence of evil disproves the existence of God. Well, I say the existence of evil, and I think we all would agree that there's evil in the world, right? There's evil everywhere. The existence of evil proves the existence of God. It's like this, you can have a car and a car can develop rust. What does that mean? Well, it's the erosion of the car. You can have a car with rust and you have a car without rust, but you can't have rust without a car. You can have good and evil when the absence of good begins to erode, evil arises. But you can't have evil without the good. In fact, many atheists and many skeptics say, well, if God is good, then uh, he must not be powerful enough to deal with all the evil and the injustice going on in the world. If he's powerful enough to stop it and he doesn't, then either he himself is evil or he's uncaring or detached from people's lives. So which is it? Is he a good God who just doesn't care? Is he an evil God who chooses not to do anything for people? The scriptures make it very plain. That God didn't create the world in the state that it is now in. Evil came as a result of the selfishness of man. The Bible says that God is a God of love. He desired to create a person or a people and eventually a race who would love him. But genuine love cannot exist unless freely given through free choice and free will. So man was given the choice to accept God's love or to reject it. The choice that made the possibility of evil very real. So when Adam and Eve disobeyed God by their choice, they brought evil into this world. So man brought evil upon himself. But although evil is here and evil is present, evil is temporary and it will eventually be destroyed. And that's the hope that every single believer has. Now I know that we, we operate in time, space, and matter, and we can't really wrap our heads around God who is outside of time. And we think that because we measure things in time, that if God was good, he would stop evil today. Well, God's not bound by time. So God's process and God's plan, although in our minds it's taking too long, maybe his plan is absolutely perfect. You see, we found ourselves separated from God because of our selfish choice, but God stepped into our lives and provided a bridge that allowed us to come back to him through his son, Jesus Christ. All we have to do is be willing to come back through Christ to the Father. As the worship team comes back, I want to paint a scenario for you that illustrates this concept of the heart of the Father, the love of God, the free will, free choice of man. One morning in the middle of Pakistan, during unrest in the city, a little girl and her mom were preparing dinner. When there was a knock at the door and the little girl didn't know any better, she made her way to the door and opened the door and there at the door were standing some terrorists. They asked for water, she let them in. And that's when they brutally murdered her mother in ways that's best left undescribed. 
after they killed the mother, they took the daughter by the wrist when all of a sudden they heard the click of a gun. And it was the father pointing a gun at the head of the leader of this terrorist group. This girl was saved by the protection of her father. But the terrorists didn't give up that easy. Their anger towards this father burned and they made their way to the girl's school and approached her kindly and cunningly and began to convince the little girl that it was the father's fault because he was the one who had built the house and built the door that they were able to come in, that he built an unsafe place. And that's why her mother is dead today. That the responsibility is not upon them, but the responsibility to blame is upon the father. So the terrorists convinced this girl that she should join their organization and help fight against other fathers and other families who fall in the same category, fathers who had built unsafe homes and had built doors that terrorists could come in and go out of. In reality, this door was built for the freedom of the daughter. So the daughter could come in and the daughter could go out according to her free will. But as soon as the, little, the terrorist organization got this girl out of the protection of her father's home, they began to torture her. They began to brainwash her. They began to terrorize her until she forgot her own identity. And she just believed that this is the way life was everywhere and didn't even try to escape. You'd think she'd just run back to the father's house, but her anger towards her father continued to increase. Even every day, the beatings, the lashes, the torture, her anger towards her father increased, not towards those who were punishing her. Her father would come to the gate of the terrorist camp every night and would cry and would call his daughter's name. At first she could hear the cry of her father, but she would turn up the music to drown out the voice. You see, freedom, love, and healing were just on the other side of the gate. All she had to do is to walk through that gate back into freedom, love, and healing. God created free will in the same way. He created free will as a door that provided freedom for us to be able to come in and go out and freely choose the love of the Father. But it also becomes the very nature, by its nature of its existence, becomes a door that the enemy could come through. But we all still have a choice, a choice on who we're going to follow and who we're going to believe. You see, our free will was created so that we could choose love. Because a life as robots, forced to love someone, forced to pledge allegiance to someone is no real life. That's no real love. So God gives us this love. He gives us his choice. He gives us this opportunity. But the terrorist of our souls, who is Satan, has been successful through the ages of convincing people that the blame is not him or the terrorist. It's the father who created the door, who provided the way for us to have the free will to choose to love. If we really knew the intentions of the soul terrorist, we would be sick to our stomachs. If we really knew the lies that Satan has caused so many unsuspecting people to believe, we would be sick to our stomachs. Many people across this world have forgotten what it means to be human. We've forgotten the way we're supposed to treat one another. We have forgotten our inheritance. We have forgotten how loved we really are. And we've bought into the lie of the enemy. My plea, my cry, my prayer today is that you would turn down the music. You would hear the voice of the Father. You would realize whose voice is actually the voice of reason, the voice of love, the voice of truth. That you would not reject the voice of the Father. The enemy has lied to you. He's lied to you about the reason for the door. He's lied to you about the reason you have free will. He's lied to you about who is actually on your side and who's not. He's lying to you. And what I realize today is that there are a lot of people who are on this 
the beginning steps of this journey, trying to figure out what God is about, trying to figure out what Jesus is about. And the enemy has lied to you and make you think, made you think that religion is just all about man. It's just about building buildings and it's just about material things. The enemy has lied to you and made you think that because there is evil in this world that somehow or another God is uncaring and God is unloving. He's made you think that if God really, really cared about you, then he would stop all evil. But to stop all evil would be to take away your choice to be able to choose to follow him or even choose to reject him if you chose. He loves you enough, he'll give you that choice. And the wrong choice of so many people is what has created so much pain and evil in our world today. My desire today is that if you're on the beginning journey of trying to find out who Christ is, who God is, that you would realize he's a loving father who has planned so many wonderful things for you that your best is on his mind. What he started in you, he will finish. That he wants to do good in your life. That really the best is yet to come. You have to believe it. But there are some others who you've been in this walk of faith for a long time. And the sad truth is, you're so far down this road that you believe the best is behind you. You've stopped believing in miracles. You've stopped believing in signs and wonders. You've stopped believing that revival could actually take place today. You've stopped believing that marriages could be restored and that, that healing could take place. You've stopped believing in the supernatural work of God. You're, you have resigned yourself to live in the glory of the past. You've believed a lie just like somebody who believes that God doesn't even love them. And what it's caused both people to do, whether you're at the beginning of the process of your walk of faith or whether you're years into it, it's caused you to become stagnant and paralyzed. And you're not moving forward. And I want to challenge every single one of us here today and every person that's watching this service online right now to not allow the enemy or the lies of the enemy to paralyze you anymore. I want to challenge you to pull your feet up out of the mud and out of the cement and out of the clay. And I want you to start moving forward. Break, break yourself out of the, the prison camp of the lies of the terrorists that's been holding you back and realize that God has created a bridge for us to walk over through Jesus Christ. And when we do, we'll come right into the arms of a father, a father who loves you and cares about you and has a wonderful, wonderful plan for your life. And yes, the best is yet to come. What he has in store for you is so much more than you could ever imagine. Imagine what he has designed for you is so much more than you've ever dreamed of. You've prayed for certain things, but God's saying, I want you to pray for more. You've dreamed certain things. He's saying, I want you to dream again. You have thought that you know what God's plan for your life is, but I'm telling you, God's plan is even better than you've ever imagined. And if you'll stop allowing yourself to be paralyzed, you could step into something beautiful for God. Would you do me a favor and stand to your feet all over this place? I'm gonna ask you here for just the next moment. Just close your eyes, slip up your hands. As we raise our hands and surrender to God right now, I want us to begin to identify the areas of our life where maybe we've believed the lie of the enemy. We believe that the best is behind us rather than ahead of us. We believe that God is against us rather than for us. And I want us to say, God, I want you to expose the lies that I believe that have caused me to be paralyzed in my journey of faith. And I want to move forward towards you right now. I want to move forward towards you. I don't want to be held still or stifled or, 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 or paralyzed anymore. I want to know you. I want to experience you. I want the best that you have for me. So Lord, I choose to believe all that you say. I refuse to believe the lie of the enemy. I break myself out of this camp and I move towards you, my loving Heavenly Father. And I say, teach me, show me, prove me. Oh God, that you want to do good in my life and I will follow you. I will trust you. I will believe you all the days of my life. Come on, make that commitment to him right here, right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.